Welcome to another episode of the Online Prosperity Experience Podcast. You're about to hear your host, Prosper Taravinga's powerful digital marketing strategies and actionable tactics that you can use right now. Prosper has helped more than 50,000 people from over 10 countries to create meaningful businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Listen to this podcast so that you too can build your own business with less stress and overwhelm. Let's get started. How to be seen as an expert in your industry. Now I can understand you're a coach, consultant, or small to medium business, and you want to make a crack at, you know, building a business that's profitable and enjoyable, but how do you actually make a mark and what does it take to be seen as an expert? And um, I'd like to walk you through that in this uh, episode today. And I'm also going to, you know, let you know that this is going to be totally different to everyone, depending on whatever it is that you want to create. And knowing that um, we're just going to go in with the standard or normal uh, definition of what an expert is. And also knowing what it, why if being an expert, um, you know, in, in, on your journey to creating a business that's profitable, enjoyable, will actually uh, pay dividends and, you know, the reasons why it's very essential in this day and age for you to be doing that. Because it actually pays to be seen as an expert. And like I mentioned, depending on your goals, being seen as an expert could actually help you get a lot more leverage and, um, you know, more viewership of your content and people might actually start viewing you as a thought leader. And let me tell you something. Once you're in the realm of thought leaders or experts within your industry, you never have to then line up for jobs or you will actually start having a queue of your own dream clients who actually climb all over each other just to give you their money. And this is actually um, achievable if you uh, lay out the groundwork and do all the work that's going to make your business uh, profitable and enjoyable. And let me tell you something. You'll be able to grow your business to whatever you want to grow it. Um, some people talk about seven figures or eight B, uh, eight figures uh, and and that kind of stuff, if that's for you, then obviously, yeah, you can grow your business up to those lengths. I've just seen one of the people that I hang out with um, most of the time. They just bought a piece of property um, right close to where they're living. And that's how they are choosing to showcase, you know, their newfound wealth. You know, and once you're in those sort of levels, the conversations you start having, the deals you start making, they're totally different and you become a new uh, breed of entrepreneur. And let me tell you something, you never have to cold call a, another client ever again, especially if you're a consultant. You never have to send an email that gets ignored and you never have to lie awake in bed every single night wondering where your next client is going to come from. And one thing that I know is you're going to be enjoying the growth of your business and a lot more financial security, which means you get to do stuff that you absolutely love. Doesn't this sound good? I know it does for myself. And let me tell you something. If you just really go in and zero in on becoming an expert you will literally work from wherever you want and you will literally, um, you know, live a life that a lot of people are dreaming of. Only simply because you've done the work, you've done the homework and you've done everything else that matters in order for you to be, do and have a business that's enjoyable and um, that's profitable and enjoyable. But let's, let's look at what it actually uh, means and what it actually takes for you to then become an expert. And what actually is an expert? All right, so in all essence, your life story and your knowledge is your own personal domain that you can actually create uh, intellectual property and expertise upon. So you really don't want to skimp on the things that made you who you were, the things that actually 
um, you went through that other people might be going through and you can actually lay out a blueprint around that. All right. Because you, when once you have identified your target market and you've clarified your message through your life story and your expertise um, and stuff that you know from experience, you really want to be sharing all that to the world. And let me tell you something. This has greater importance and market value than you could ever probably imagine. All right. Because each and every one of us here is here to make a difference in the world. And the best way to do that is to use your knowledge and the experience you've garnered throughout the years on pretty much any topic that you're familiar with to help others make sense of the world around them, or in other words, to help them succeed. Now, you start getting paid for you to share this advice because you're literally helping people um, go through things that would have otherwise have been much more expensive for them to go through by themselves. So your how-to information is now out there helping other people succeed. And in the process, you can actually build a very lucrative uh, business that is uh, profitable and you can enjoy it and a meaningful life for those that are around you. And if any of this sounds unbelievable, especially the part about you actually getting paid uh, to share what you might essentially be your message to the world, then it's simply because you haven't been aware of a fairly unknown and previously sort of select um, group of people or secret industry that exists all around us. And it is actually called the expert industry, right? It could actually help your brand to achieve more visibility and earn more trust from its customers. And once you build all these things together, you can actually build a meaningful career and you're giving yourself access to more choices and more growth than you could have possibly done if you had not chosen the route of becoming an expert. Okay. But let me tell you something, being an expert and being seen as an expert are two different things. So there are experts who don't get the respect that they actually deserve. And then there's non-experts that are just showing up that are being treated like true authorities and celebrities. So what I really want you to do is not to only just be seen as an expert, but to actually be the expert. And if you got those two things working in unison, I guarantee you, you will create uh, a remarkable business that's profitable and enjoyable. So let's just look at the compon components of this expertise that we're talking about, all right? And we want to look at what does it actually take to be seen as an expert. That's the first part that we might want to look at. Because this might be different depending on your industry or what your speciality is. And for some people, you know, just wearing a suit and speaking in an authoritative manner is all it takes for you to be seen as an authority. And for others, it's more discerning than that, all right? So look at your domain and see the people that are already ahead of you. What are they doing, okay? What credentials are they uh, yielding in front of you? Are they original enough? What sort of confidence are they wielding? And see if that's the kind of um, expert you want to become in your domain, okay? So in any case, there's perceived expertise and there's actual expertise which can be um, attributed to things that you have done and things that you have actually achieved. Right now, a TikToker can hold people's attention, but do they have authority? I guess not, okay? So you want to have the credentials that go uh, along with what domain you have chosen to be seen as an expert in, okay? You need some sort of definable metric that either more or less prove that you're an expert. Maybe a degree or some sort of certification from a respectable institution or an official title can actually go a long way. But if you also can show people that you're an avid learner, you're constantly upping your game, you've got books behind you, you're recommending books, people would actually now start associating that credibility uh, and authority based on the domain 
that you're constantly learning and researching all about. And don't forget, while you're doing all of this and you're gathering all this information from uh, different sources, you need to constantly be original, all right? Because like I said uh, in the beginning, that your life story and your life knowledge and, you know, eventually your message, um, the things that you've known from your own unique experiment is what you want to be sharing in the world out there. Because if you then just end up as a me too expert or consultant or coach out there, what would be the reason why people would want to copy you? And what would be the reason why people would want to, um, you know, follow the stuff that you are showcasing? You see, <laughs> I'm the founder of um, a digital agency called Live Long Digital, where we help businesses explode in growth using digital marketing. And I'm really passionate about helping coaches and consultants and small business owners to actually grow their business because I know what it's like to come from nothing. You see, I was born in Zimbabwe, and I don't know if you know where that is, but I reiterate this a lot because that is my story. That is my origin story, how I came to be. You know what I mean? And when I, when I, when I was in Africa, growing up was pretty tough for us. We had no you know, hope or we had little money and um, we had no actual role models. Now, my journey and my story now predicates on the fact that I want to represent an idea that you can be, do and have whatever you want, just simply based on the fact that you want it. Okay. And we had no role models and there was no one to really look up to. And we had no, um, no one was there to inspire especially myself and to look and uh, beyond my horizons. But my life changed when a bright eyed, um, a bright eyed Australian teacher came to work at my school. I was about 13 years old at that time. And she taught me and told me that Australia was an incredible place full of opportunities, etc., etc. When I was growing up, all we had was TV from America and Australia was not that much, you know, in the limelight, but I started gaining a bit of interest around Australia up until I could see the world of, of possibilities. And when the US was in recession and Australia wasn't in, in a recession, I thought, wait a minute, I'm going to go to Australia because that's what I think my calling is. And that story is so original. No one can have the same circumstances, the same scenarios, the same teacher coming in at the same time and changing the course of your life like that. And there's so many stories and uh, lessons that somebody can learn from just that episode alone in my life. So that's where the originality comes in. And I can speak on behalf of people that might uh, be thinking, oh, I can't be successful because I haven't got X, Y, and Z in my life. Wait a minute. Do you know where I came from? So that's the originality um, that I'm talking about because there are likely thousands or even millions of people that are claiming to be experts just like you. What is it that you bring to the table? What is it that makes you unique? What is it that makes you different? And once you've defined and de decided what story you're going to be talking about, say it with confidence and repeat it to whoever is going to be listening at any given moment because... We might think that people are paying attention to our content, but hey, people are busy, all right? So this confidence is, is now going to be um, seen in how you present your story, how you showcase um, your branding, and how much of this story you're willing to repeat over and over again. And how do you present yourself? Because that matters too. You know, your eloquence, your grace. Do you have that authoritative confidence that can help you build an image uh, for people that are seeking uh, maybe the solutions that you might have. Because once you now tell your story, once you have all of these components and pieces together, you're going to need to have so many connections, all right? So many people that validate and can vouch for your authority and your confidence and say, hey, I've seen what this guy has done and I've seen what he's done with his life and also the other lives that he's changed um, outside of, of himself. So you're going to need those connections. 
All right. Um, because if you notice, many people evaluate authority by, um, I think they call it proxy. You know, right? birds of a feather flock together. Whether you want to admit it or not, people judge us by who is around us because they know and think we are an average of five people that we spend most of the time with. So the people you work with can significantly influence how you are perceived, okay? You might be hanging around an old school friend who is probably a jailbird and is always in and out of trouble. You know what I mean? You constantly now get associated with whatever it is that has happened in their life. Look at the current scenario of Bill Gates and Michael Apestein. I'm not going to go into much detail, but look at this. This is all about association. So how can you earn all of these things for yourself? The credentials, the originality, the confidence, and the connections. You know what I mean? You need to constantly be working on yourself. You need to constantly be surrounding yourself with people that can elevate you and eventually you can be perceived as a, um, you know, as a, as a, um, as, as an expert. Okay. So somebody might be asking how, how am I then going to be able to do all of these things? Most of these things are done by immersing yourself. Okay. You can go out and earn these credentials. All right. You can either start a blog or you can start becoming active on social media and telling your story and you can syndicate and uh, distribute all your work up until people know who you are and you build a network in the process. Okay. So all of these things, we're now living in a world where it's super, super easy for you to build a global small business, just simply based on the fact that you are showing up every single day, telling people your story. You might be just thinking, okay, maybe this doesn't sound like myself, but you know, being an expert is just being in an industry of caring people, people that actually want others to succeed. And it's like a caring community of people who share their advice and their knowledge in the world. They just so happen to be paid for it. And these are the people that you see on television, on online sharing, um, you know, platforms or on social media, they're sharing their advice on how you can improve your life, how you can grow your business. These are just ordinary people who've packaged their success, they've packaged their research, all their life story into advice and step-by-step, -step, um, you know, uh, blueprints where people can actually uh, follow through and maybe become better parents, better business people, uh, succeed at work, et cetera, et cetera. So you are already listening to these experts and you should be asking yourself, how do I join the realm of these, um, you know, uh, people that have already created a lifestyle and obviously, you know, that, the, 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 the perception that they are able to deliver on that topic. And these people are just living with passion. And they're just sharing the information on any topic because they've earned the credentials. Okay. And let me tell you, these are just average people who've synthesized, like I keep repeating their life experience and they've just created products or programs and they sell these to the public. But for people to trust what information you're selling, you have to have earned the credentials and your first job, if you want to be perceived as an expert is to just get those credentials that you need to be seen as a credible person in your field. And in some industry, there's almost um, not getting around it. You know, the, you can't be a financial advisor without any financial sort of qualification or credentials that warrant that you can be giving advice to people out there. All right. And, um, you know, some industries, you don't need that sort of qualification, but you need to be able to really, really speak in a way that people would think, okay, this person knows what they're talking about or they've done the work. Okay. So you could work for several years in your chosen industry, or you could just actually, um, write something or write a book that people would, um, follow through and learn from. And if somebody can get results, from what you have said and repeat it to two or three more people, then you can.
be an expert, all right? So how do you do this at scale? How do you leverage your expertise and your knowledge and all that stuff, you know, without burning out? Because you can't be out there just talking, talking, talking without, you know, you actually experiencing uh, burnout. You can either start a blog or you can start a podcast like this, or you could actually write a book, okay? But the first thing you want to be doing is creating content that is valuable, okay? Because people are coming to the internet to get information. And if you're then the person that's providing that information, they get to know you, they get to like you and trust you, and people do business with those that they know, like, and trust. So creating content will be one of the best ways to prove that you know what you're talking about. And it's an easy way to actually differentiate yourself with your original thoughts, and you can you have liberty to um, repeat your story over and over again um, without you having to depend on other platforms for you to be able to uh, be given an opportunity or to be picked in order for you to um, say what it is that you want to say. So creating content is just low-hanging fruit for self-marketing. Like what I'm doing right now, every single day on this podcast, what I'm doing is bit by bit, I'm building that credibility within you so that you get to know, like, and trust who I am, associate my voice with expertise. And if I then come in your newsfeed or in your email trying to sell you something, you would know that I'm not just peddling hogwash. I actually know what it is that I'm talking about. So you want to build an archive of several dozen posts, podcasts, and try and write new and fresh content in your area of expertise at least once or twice every single week, just so that people would know that what you're talking about is current and is fresh. Um, let's maybe give an example of you being an accountant. If your last blog was in 2002, um, when the cloud was not yet in full effect, Accounting has totally changed ever since people can actually use the cloud and no longer have to pedal paperwork to their accountant or receipts in a shoebox, all right? So you want to stay relevant. And the one thing that keeps you relevant is social media because social media has a debt stamp, right? If the last post you put up was maybe um, eight years ago, people will be like, either you fell off the wagon or you... You don't have anything fresh for them to follow. So you want to be active on social media because once somebody comes across your content, either on your website or whatever, they go in and check your social media. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I check their social media just to see how current and how relevant these people claim to be. So much of your growth as a perceived expert will come from your interactions on social media, whether you like it or not, because that now has become the place to be if you want to showcase your expertise. And there's sort of a lot of elements that you want to uh, look at this strategy here. And, and, and this is yet another podcast that I need to create on how, to, um, how your business can succeed with social media. But today, we're just going to try and, and, and highlight what you know, social media can do towards building towards your expertise. Because once you're on social media, those blogs and those podcasts that we mentioned earlier, you can actually syndicate them and use them to distribute your, your work, especially on social media. And social media is actually just a perfect outlet for you to distribute your written work or other valuable content at scale. You know, as your audience is growing, your work gets more visibility and you actually have an easier time convincing others that truly know what it is that you're talking about because you now have, you know, you know, a few fans that are always uh, liking and sharing your content, which then creates social proof. Um, and a lot of people have a big problem with social proof because they can't clearly showcase how valuable they are uh, to their audience. All right. And one thing that you can do with your personal profile is just join groups and get involved in these discussions, because not only are you going to identify your target market in there, but being in groups help you clarify your message. You can actually start testing your message or different offers to um, unsuspecting group people there, because that visi visibility 
will start then associating your brand with um, whatever uh, area of expertise that you're going to be, um, you know, uh, taunting out there. And visibility doesn't accumulate by itself. You know, you, you don't get known just by having an alphabet soup on your LinkedIn profile. No matter how much you know and how much you have done, that's the one reason why a lot of experts never get any recognition that they deserve because they're not putting themselves out there. If you really want to build your authority and reputation, you need to join groups and get active in those discussions because everyday people and everyday conversations is how you can then differentiate yourself from me to experts out there. So you can answer these questions. You can give your opinion where it's appropriate and don't be afraid to debate with people as long as it's within your brand. And just like anything else, avoid religion, politics, and um, any other taboo subjects that might actually then, um, you know, taint your efforts, you know, just go in there and, and be of value because we get paid in direct proportion to the value that we bring to the marketplace. So if people are happy with your content, then they'll seek you out and, and, and um, either follow you or start subscribing to whatever it is that you're creating. And in the process, you're building your network because you're spending time um, with people that are your ideal target audience and you're actually clarifying your message and then people get to know, like, and trust you. And once you have a network, you can then try and con convert that network into leads and then those leads eventually into customers. So spend time building your network as well, All right? Connect with the people in these groups, reach out to people that you know in real life, Get your follow accounts up and then just start climbing the influencer ladder in your industry. Because uh, like it or not, people tend to like um, what other people like. So celebrity status is synonymous with success and with authority. The more people in your network and uh, the more authoritative these people are, the more expertise um, is perceived around what it is that you are doing. And... It's not just people that you need to partner with. You also need to affiliate or be associated with trusted brands. Because once you have these trusted brands around you, it automatically transfers this trust signals that these brands have spent time, money, and effort building. Right. So when you start uh, partnering with these trusted brands, it also just transfers this trust to you. And, you know, you could get your work published in already established magazines, you know, like the entrepreneur or whatever magazine, um, you know, your target audience likes reading. So there you go. The road to being an expert can be a long and difficult one, but this is what you want for the rest of your life. Right. And it is really worth it because once you're an expert, people are, you know, bidding a pathway to your door because they want uh, to learn from you because of your life story and your expertise. And when you now start having better reputation and more visibility, you have a better chance of actually achieving your goals and actually helping other people be, do, and have a happier existence. Because never forget that we're here to live, we're here to learn, and we're here to contribute. And to live the best life, you need to have learned from other experts and once you've learned, you need to pass the elevator down. And by passing the elevator down, I refer to you contributing so that others can be, do, have a happier existence as well. So whether you're interested in building a business from scratch or just climbing the next rudder of your personal career, let me tell you what, being an expert will actually help you leverage all of this without having to uh, scrap or, um, you know, beg people to do business with you. All right. So now it's your turn. I really want you to discover how you can grow your service business from whatever level you are right now to the $2 million mark. Cause that's what I'm an expert in. And you can do that in just two years. Okay. So let me just save you a lot of time right now. We've got what's called the online prosperity method that can be tailored to any service business. Um, you know, just so you can explode your growth and actually grow your expertise. So if you're a coach or consultant, you can actually achieve the same mind-blowing success that has um, helped my clients 
um, create businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. But it doesn't mean that I'm willing to just take on everyone. All right. Because I'm now an expert in what I'm doing. My client list is often full and my calendar is booked out weeks or months in advance. It's because I've done the work for becoming an expert to become who I uh, have become. And I'm only going to take a few people who are willing to work hard and follow their dreams. Because just like the Australian teacher I was telling you earlier on, um, who helped me those years ago. These are the sort of people who have what it takes to succeed. So with that in mind, I want you to schedule a call with me or just subscribe to this podcast because information like this is hard to come by. There are a lot of people that claim to uh, know what they're talking about there, but they're not experts. And I want you to be an expert, all right? So there you have it. Um, let me know how you're going. And if there's something that I can do to help you, just jump on a call with me and let's figure out how we can contribute to you becoming an expert because it actually does pay to be an expert depending on your goals being seen as being seen as an expert could actually help you get a lot of leverage um, for you to build a business that's profitable and enjoyable bye for now thank you for joining us today if you have any questions let's continue the conversation in the live long digital community become a live long digital community member today this community is for ambitious entrepreneurs and small business owners with the drive to take control of the future of their businesses and achieve huge success without stress and overwhelm. As you heard, Prosper can help you by teaching you marketing strategies that work. So look no further than the live long digital community of entrepreneurs and highly successful business owners. Join our community today. Find us on www.community.livelongdigital.com.au. Network with other driven entrepreneurs and find the expert guidance you need to take your business to the next level. www.community.livelongdigital.com.au.